Good morning, folks. Thanks for coming by for, actually, it's day two for us. Day two of the summit here at Shimano. Um, yeah, we're at Shimano headquarters. Pretty, pretty awesome place. Yeah, <laughs> we learned a lot. Here. We learned a lot yesterday. Um, over the top, actually. Yeah. Things, yeah. things I didn't know, that's for sure. Um, this morning, we just want to give you a run through of some of like, some of just, I don't know, the innovations that Shimano does on a, on a regular basis on a lot of the reels. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, and, and let me say here too, um, Shimano has been the company that I have used since I was nine, 10 years old. When I was old enough to mow a lawn, to get a check or yeah, get some yeah, cash, some cash whatever. <laughs> to buy a reel, my first reel, and to ride my bike down to the pond was a Shimano reel, and that's what I've used all ever since. So uh, definitely uh, longevity in their products. So let's Absolutely. go check it out. Let's check it out. Tour is a little oh, abrupted. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we got locked out. We're gonna have to walk around. <laughs> Well, here we are. This is what they call the Shimano experience. Uh, mission statement, a little bit of their history. Uh, 1921, holy crap, all the way, boom. Actually, this is the first Shimano bait casting reel I ever saw, the Bantam 100. Look at that, it's got a wood handle on it. Um, just everything, all the way up to, boom. The DC, 2018. Our dogfish reel. And then over here, check this out. You're not going to believe this. This is a $10,000 spinning reel. It's got a clear frame, and they said that to get this frame as clear as it is to show the working parts of this reel is about $10,000. And this is actually uh, the Aero Stratic. This is the first kind of high-end spinning reel I ever had. Super Stopper 2 Anti-Reverse. This is before the Super Tight Anti-Reverse. Crazy. Definitely not near as smooth as the reels nowadays. Yeah, just kind of a walk through time. Some of the, the old classic. Yeah, this was uh, the reel. This was my bread and butter reel. Bass, pike fishing. Uh, a little bit of everything. The uh, classic green Corrado. Uh, apparently this was the first year of the Corrado. Kind of a weird two-tone, looks like kind of Darth Vader-ish. But uh, uh, what else we got here? Let's see. Oh, here we go. Basically, one of the first musky reels right there. Bantam mag, wide spool, no instant and reverse. No thumb bar, it's got the old school. Uh, it does have a clicker, so that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, yeah, just kind of a... Can't oh. forget about that tranks down there. Oh, wow, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Apparently, this guy was using this tranks and was struck by lightning. And this is, uh, the reel survived. The rod was completely exploded. It looks like the handle got blown off. And apparently the guy was okay. So, miracles uh, do happen. Crazy. Wow, yeah, it, it, it actually reels well. Yeah, you can see it's actually fried on the handle there. On the bottom there, too. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> so, folks, remember, go in when the lightning's banging. I certainly know why I've used Shimano since I was 10 years old and bought my first one from Lawn Mowing Money. Um, the longevity of the reels. Uh, about eight years ago or so, I was still using other brands intermittently, and I won't mention any names, but uh, kind of an eye-opener. One thing was when I would send reels of other manufacturers in for repair, they would actually send me back a new reel. That's not a good sign. That means these things are built 
to be repaired, re, you know, fixed. You right. know, they're not just throwaway reels. Yep. And, and why, why is Shimano, why do they just hang in there forever? Why is the longevity so tremendous on these reels? Well, one of the things that separates us from the vast majority of manufacturers, you know, we are the only major manufacturer, what I would say, um, that designs engineers and manufactures all of our reels in our own factories of their own people. You know, Team Shimano Global, we've got only over 13,000 employees. We've got factories in over 10 countries between the bike and the fish side. So we've got uh, a ton of manufacturing capability um, and nearly a hundred year history of processing metals. So. Um, a lot of that also just driven just by our technology, you know, and, and our engineering capability. We've got really cool, unique features like micromodule gears and yeah, we'll uh, that. really smooth out of the box, lasts a really long time. Uh, our Hagane gears, our cold fork spinning reel gears are made to basically last forever. That's the target, right? We want these things to be a reel that you can have for life. Um, a well-maintained reel can last for, for 30 years. I know guys that are fishing with a lot of our stuff from yeah. late 80s, early 90s, right? I uh, still have the original 1992 silver Calcutta, yeah, and they still yeah, operate yeah, fine. Absolutely. Um, so we're really known for that that kind of durability and, and longevity and, and just smoothness out of the box. And that's kind of our commitment to our, our customer base. Um, and that's just part of the, the Team Shimano philosophy is we want to enhance people's enjoyment of the, of the sport and make sure they got really good gear in their hands that, that is a worthwhile investment. So Not a throwaway. No, absolutely. Equipment. No, I, I don't consider any of our stuff to be, um, you know, throwaway. I mean, my first... Shimano reel was an FX spinning reel that oh, yeah. uh, my grandfather gave to me when I was seven years old, right? So 25 years ago, I still got it. I don't use it, but it still works, oh, yeah. right? So, um, and that's that's a $12 reel, right? So we make right. things from all the way from that price point up to, Who you know, $1,500, 1600 <laughs> offshore reels. But um, every, Franks, you know, every Shimano reel also, it's it's uh, we apply the same QC standards, right? So everything goes through the same rigorous, rigorous testing process and, um, we don't make anything that is just uh, made to be thrown away or, or right. right. You know, we hold everything to the same standard. So that's a, that's a key point. But. Well, Trey's gonna show us why the reels are smoother, last longer, more dependable. Let's go take a look at this stuff. So here we're at the station that explains all the Shimano technologies and why, and Trey, what, show us, what is this hockey puck here? Yeah, so this is, um, this is kind of the raw material that we use for uh, cold forging spinning reel gear. So we have what we call Hagane gear, which means uh, cold forge spinning reel gear and price point from Sedona at $69 all the way up to Stella, you know? So um, nobody else in the industry is putting this level of gear in, in, in reels, um, especially not in those price points. And uh, basically we hit this with a, with a press and this gear itself, um, basically there's no additional process to the, to the gear face, right? So it's like taking its final form, this gear itself. We do press this stem inside, but other than that, what you see here is hit with a press and becomes this, and it gets incredibly condensed and harder, and that's what makes it more durable and last longer, right? So, um, cold forging cold on forging. the spinning, on, on the, the spinning, spinning gears. gears, yeah. So that's uh, really our core competency um, as a manufacturer is, is cold forging, and that's a little hockey puck turns into this with with uh, that's a, crazy. A lot of high pressure and yeah, how and, much uh, pressure? How uh, much up force? to up to two thousand tons. So that's uh, the strike of the press. So it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of a lot of pressure um, so to get something condensed and that hard and uh, that that durable you need a ton of pressure so um, it's uh, definitely one of the one of the key points that, that separates us from the rest so well, all you got to do is walk into any tackle shop and spin a handle and they're definitely the smoothest out there but even more importantly is spin that handle a year later five years later ten years later yeah yeah that's Absolutely. the difference so uh, what, let's take let's take a look at what's inside uh, the bait casting reels. So obviously you've guys seen us use uh, the gold reels. Those were the, uh, the Calcutta TE 400s, which really was my bread and butter musky reel for as long as they were made. But they quit making them uh, up until I think it was around 2000 ish or yeah. whatever 99. But uh, probably the main difference with uh, why those reels were so good was the. 20 or was it 30% larger main gear? Yep, the high TE gear. gear. Yep. So it's just a larger, a larger gear than what was available in the other reels, which obviously 
uh, transfers into a lot more power, a yep. lot more torque. So yeah, so that was kind of the introduction of the the high efficiency gears to the market, which means basically yeah that oversized main gear. Uh, that's evolved over time, and now we have things like micro module gears in, in certain bay casters. Don't have them in the Trank series, but we've got them in things like Corrado 200 sure. um, and some of the higher end bay casters as well. Um, but the cool thing about micro module gears is it's just more gear teeth uh, engaged at any time with that pinion gear makes it incredibly smooth and incredibly durable um, but uh, yeah so it's uh, these are both you know bay casting gears here you've got one that is a regular high efficiency gear and here's one that's a, a micro module so you can see those gear teeth are really fine um, and yeah, so at, at any given time you're gonna have twice as many gear teeth engaged with the, with the micro module gear so um, it's uh, that's a big part to why the new reels are even smoother out of the box than, than, than the some, old school than some ones. of the old school ones. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, with with more teeth, it's like less bumps in the road, yeah, kind of exactly. sort of. It's yeah, not it's as, always not always as bumpy. more engagement and just smoother turning every time. So, yeah. pretty awesome. Yep. Um, one other thing too on on the musky reels, you know, we're ripping baits all the time, and that's you know was a, a major weak spot in in musky tackle. Um, the, you know the anti reverse would fail in a lot of the other reels and you know shimano has always had the highest quality instant anti reverse yep. out there you know and until before they had the second backup ratchet yep, yep. Uh, and and you guys were the company that originated yep. i believe yep. assist stopper too yeah so yes. yeah our assist stopper you know we take a we use really really high quality bearings um and you know, it's one thing that people will try to knock on Shimano in some cases that we don't have as many bearings. Um, it's not about but we bearings. really put we put them where they where they need to be. Yeah. Um, and also we use incredibly high quality bearings. Um, you know, our anti reverse bearing is the best anti reverse oh, bearing yeah. in the market. Um, and, Every other know, reel I've used, yeah. the other brands, the handles spin backwards. You go to set the hook, and yeah, it's not good, especially for cold water fishing. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Trey, for showing us the ins and the outs of the technical side of the equipment. Um, yeah, I don't know all that business, but I do know they last longer than anything else out there. So uh, absolutely. And, thanks uh, for your time. Yeah, thanks for coming, man. This has been fun, and uh, you know, for more information on any of our stuff, just check it out at fish.shimano.com. So. Five gallons of shell in each of those tubes. That's enough to fill it up just below the knot on that handle. Lift up on the handle, shells fall in the bag. Then you want to kind of bang the shells down and fill all in all the interstitial spaces. And then that also gives you enough mesh to tie another knot. Each one of those bags will support anywhere from 450 to 1200 oysters. Let's get them, Tiger. Let's get them. I, I, yeah, I think so. Got some gloves for me? Yes, here we go. <laughs> we're in the way. Yeah, we're in the way. Um, we got quite the organ uh, crazy stuff going on behind us. Probably really loud. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just wrap it up in a nut, in a, in a, in a oyster in a, in shell. In an oyster shell, yes. That's what we're doing. Um, loading up used oyster. Is that the right Recycled term? oysters. Yep. That will be uh, thrown into mesh bags and then reuse back out onto into the water yep. to make new oyster beds. Uh, Helps the whole ecosystem. These things are very necessary. And, uh, that's what we're doing. Here we go. Let's I'll get started. Robbie, you can shoot me. All right, right on. Oh. Under 30, get up there. <laughs> Are we dying? No, we have maybe done one eighth of all of it. So, you know, this is pretty cool because this is something that we really knew nothing about. 
and to be able to understand what this does for the fishery is, is pretty huge. Um, all these shells come from uh, restaurants, uh, a lot of them anyway, uh, come from restaurants. They just recycle through them and uh, put them back in the ocean. And, you know, Shimano as a whole um, that we've learned this week has is really takes a big stand in helping uh, the environment, helping the fisheries, uh, helping donate money for from sport fish restoration to uh, building access sites. Uh, it's, they're really very involved company, so pretty cool. This, this is unique. Giant duck, duck truck is almost empty, it's unbelievable. But uh, everyone's working hard, it's pretty nuts. Quite the, quite the organization here. All right, folks, so we got her done about an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, Reppy, uh, Robbie, sweaty. Reppy, <laughs> you were pretty peppy out there. <laughs> lots of shuffling, lots of bagging. Um, wow, yeah, a lot of hard workers. And um, we got, I don't know how many a bags we did. A complete truckload. Two, two trailers, yeah. That's crazy. Nuts. But uh, this helps the ecosystem down here. Um, what was the fact they filter how uh, many? Like two and, and a half gallons per hour. Per hour, and 33 an gallons in 24 hours. They clear up the water. It's kind of like back home with zebra mussels, but obviously zebra mussels are bad, but it's right. same kind of These are deal. native. These are native. This helps the ocean. But um, yeah, pretty crazy. Now we have dinner. Wow. Apparently they have oysters for food, but at this point it's like... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I may have had enough, but we'll see how that goes. I might try it, might try it. But yeah, off to dinner now, and um, then we're done. <laughs> yeah. Can I put another pile down there? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Sure. Sure. All right, what's the run through here, Blaine? I'm not the pro. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a transplant. Okay, you're transplant. Okay. However, yeah, yeah, yeah. However. So in theory, in theory, okay. as these are steamed, there's gaps in every one of them, yep. and that's what this knife is for: is to go in there and peel it apart. All right there, it is. Bang, bang. Right. Okay. You can put it on a saltine, little Tabasco, or just eat it. And maybe some lemon. Bang. Uh, All right. <laughs> Taste test. Good. Oh, <laughs> it's good. I'll have to try some. It's official now. We're in South Carolina. Well. We got this. You know what? I'm gonna try this one without any sauces on it, just to get the real feel here. The taste test says it's good. It's way better than a can. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, way yeah. better. Than a can. You never had them up in the can? No, I don't think so. Oh, this is huge. I had them raw one time when I was like five or so, but I don't really remember that experience too well. But welcome steamed. To the yep, absolutely. Very good. Very good. Now try one with hot sauce. Well, I must say, we certainly enjoyed our time uh, down here so far. Yeah, pretty awesome. Especially just, the food. The food, holy crap. Beef brisket, beef, ev just holy cow. Oyster Oysters. boil. Yep. Uh, what else do we have? Pork tenderloin, some shrimp, grilled, some shrimp, mac and cheese. Just totally full. Dialed. Three meal days, which is usually not our, our style. No, no. <laughs> this is much better than we've eaten yeah. uh, in quite a long yeah, time. Yeah. So it was pre pretty awesome experience. Got to learn a lot. Um, it's not it's not the end of the road though. Still got some we got the highlight is tomorrow basically with the fishing. Yeah, we're gonna go do some more fishing tomorrow. Uh ho hopefully we'll catch multiple species that we've never caught before. Mm -hmm. Totally new to us. Yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, sounds like uh, well I did cross off yeah, a big one a too. Big red like, fish. I don't think we're gonna be running into that uh, caliber. Yeah, that's just that's um, a, not a rare fish, but yeah, a very quality fish. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, speckled trout. Yep. Yep. Um, maybe sharks. The one dude said sharks. said sharks as well. So that's what we want. Either way, it's saltwater fishing. Obviously, if you've done it. You know what it's all about. So that's what we got for tomorrow. I hope you guys enjoyed a couple sights and sounds uh, here at the Shimano headquarters. And uh, we will catch you on the next vid. Thanks for watching.